a magical place at the mouth of the River Dart. South facing with its own microclimate and foreshore, David Southwick was brought up locally with his family. When we first came here, which was an awful long time ago, there wasn't anybody on the river. We, were, we had the only boat on the river. You look at it now and there's billions of pounds worth of boats here. A bit like Venice now. The property is bespoke, with every detail thought through to maximise the position of the building, whilst allowing it to melt into the landscape. The kitchen and sitting room have their own terrace in the middle of the house, complete with glazed floor through to the spectacular Roman-style pool room below. Two bedrooms and bathrooms are on the floor above, with an additional cinema bedroom and bathroom office on the next level, alongside the entrance. What was here was a 1960s building, which wasn't really in keeping at all, and um, fortunately it was slipping down the cliff and we had the opportunity to knock it down and build something different, which is what we've done. I have a passion for stone built buildings and we wanted to try and match the, the castle, not just Dartmouth Castle but Kingsway Castle and we wanted it to blend into the, the landscape which I think it now does. History is blended in to this spectacular site. It's where Turner painted Dartmouth Castle in the 19th century and the Southwicks found inspiration for the castellated ruins and gardens of Nympha on a trip to Italy. But hard graft over decades was required to make the vision a reality. The site was excavated some 19 metres below the original 1960s foundations, a massive feat of engineering. We've gone down a long way, it's all anchored into the rock, um, including the bridge section there, which is actually a part of the reinforcing, reinforcement of the cliff. The new building is faced with stone quarried from the site and the roof is Delabole slate with copper guttering, therefore requiring minimal maintenance. Most things came by ferry or barge to the beach and we've had to build the beach up to um, obviously keep the materials above the sea level, especially in the winter when you get the storms coming in. And, and then we've gradually reused the materials from the beach and now the beach is nearly at the same level it was when we started. The building has unique features, many from obsolete vessels, as well known as the Canberra and the SS America. It's like a treasure trove collected by David, an antiques expert, over many years. All over the place there are bits of, including the, the bedrooms and the, the bathrooms, bronze portholes. In fact, there's one of the portholes from John Paul Getty, when, when his yacht was in Plymouth being refitted, um, they took out all the old bronze portholes and we managed to get one of them. I don't know what happened to the rest of them. The gardens are a work of art in themselves. Terraces created in order for David's wife Annette to work her magic. I mean, my wife saw um, the potential, I suppose, from our terracing of the gardens. And she has come along and created this Mediterranean garden within what we've created. The proximity to the sea is ever present, with protection from the banjo-shaped quay. Living with nature is part of the appeal, alongside the sheer human endeavor involved in creating this special building. Every nook and cranny has been thought through, including lookout points with panoramic views. It reminds me of living in the Mediterranean, I guess, maybe if you were living in Corsica or somewhere like that, it's, it's very similar. And the weather is kind in the winter. Very rarely do we get any snow, if ever. You've got the, the river and the, the ocean and 
you've got everything really.